Hi everyone, Amy Stein from Beyond Basics Physical Therapy in New York City. I'm the author of Heal Pelvic Pain as well as the past president of the International Pelvic Pain Society. I have the honor of having Dr. Robert Graziato here. He is the owner of Atlantic Medical Imaging, which consists of 13 outpatient facilities from Cape May, New Jersey to uh, Brick Township, New Jersey. He is the president-elect of the Radiological Society of New Jersey, counselor of the American College of Radiology, graduated from University of Pennsylvania, is married for 20 years now with two wonderful girls ages 17 and 13, and I have the honor of having him here today. We're going to talk about the International Pelvic Pain Society as well as his journey, and thank you so much for be being here. Can you explain to our listeners why you are here? Uh, the main reason I'm here is that I went through an episode of chronic pelvic pain that I don't want anybody else ever to go through. What I went through, I went through a very circuitous course. I saw three to four different doctors before they got that right. And then I saw some different physical therapists before I found the right place up here. So I went a very, like I said, circuitous route that I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through. So I'm trying to get the word out. And the other thing is, um, I read a New York Times article about all these men with pelvic pain and they had gone through some of the things that I did and some of them went years without even getting the right treatment. And the interesting part in, in that article, none of the men would give their name. It was all anonymous. So I was just like, somebody has to get the word out and I've actually had, in the end, a very good experience and I want people to have the right experience that I did. To, to see the right people, to get it treated early, and you're gonna respond better. And it's something that, although it's a, a delicate subject, it happens, 10 to 16% of men it happens to, it's 8% of urologic visits to a urologist, so it's a common thing, and it should be something that's easily addressed, which it hasn't been in the past, so that's why I've become involved. Great, thank you so much, and we appreciate it, our listeners appreciate it, Societies like the International Pelvic Pain Society really appreciate it because we want to get the word out. How common, by the way, is it with women? You mentioned men. Well, women, it's, it's even more common. One in six women have pelvic pain. 90% of those women have endometriosis, which means, you know, if you do all the statistics, it's one in 10 women. So it's even more common in women than it is in men. And yet, women have a delay sometimes of up to nine years or so. That This is something that as a medical professional is unacceptable. We as a society today, especially in the United States, should not be seeing all these women and men in pain when there are avenues to address it. And why did you get involved with the International Pelvic Pain Society? Well, I actually saw it on my visit up here to New York when I, I got some of your brochures or whatever. I had seen that you were the president and they mentioned the meeting and I happened to go online and look about the meeting and it was a fascinating meeting that I said, you know, this is something that I could learn more about pain in general. It wasn't even just for pelvic pain. It was if you had back pain or whatever. So the topics were fascinating. So I went to the meeting and then I met some really great people like yourself and Stephanie and, and and Diane Lee and a whole bunch of really good people that I think are all headed in the right direction. So I sort of bonded with these people, to be quite frank with you. So, and I, I see a good group of people out there that I think can make a difference. That's the key in life. If we can make a difference in people's lives, why not? And, and it's just a matter of communication and getting the word out. And I think that's what the IPPS is doing. They're trying to get the word out and that's what we all have to do. Great. I agree. And it is a multidisciplinary uh, meeting. There's physicians there, urologists, gynecologists, physical therapists, mental health, and other allied health professions attend the meeting. I do want to give a little plug for the meeting. It is this year in Chicago, October 18th to 21st at the Fairmount Hotel. We are having a cadaver lab, which is amazing, as well as our post-conference and one of the keynote speakers is Britt Stuje from uh, Norway, and she's done a lot on pelvic girdle pain, a lot of research as well. 
We also have, offer a foundations course for those that are new to pelvic pain or even those that aren't new to pelvic pain. We've had a lot of people uh, attend the course even more than once. And then our plenary, plenary sessions, which are Friday and Saturday, and it has a bunch of wonderful speakers, a lot of wonderful keynote speakers over the years. Just check out the website, pelvicpain.org. Sign up to be a member today as well. Rob, Dr. Graziano is a, is a member. And one last thing I do want to mention for next year that and, and years to follow is that uh, International Pelvic Pain Society created May is Pelvic Pain Awareness Month. So please do look out in, in May of next year. This goes for patients as well as practitioners. We do a lot of community events, community awareness. Dr. Graziano was very, uh, we appreciated he, he donated to the International Public Pain Society at our event in New York City, which we had second year in a row, and it was a great success. And just look out for, around your community. We're trying to spread, spread the word, spread the awareness of pelvic pain. And again, check out pelvicpain.org for our meeting this year. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for being here, Dr. Graziano. Thank you for inviting me. Hope to see you all there.